My father, he once had hopes. He had a fortune, wife, child, a daughter whom he hoped should one day make a family of her own. Yet one by one, his dreams were taken from him. His wife by illness, fortune by a fall in the market. He himself died soon after, leaving behind him naught but debts, and me, an orphan, alone in the world. I made a living whatever way I could. Met a fella put me to work above a tavern, entertaining male guests at a shilling a turn. In such a life, there's little room for hopes, much less dreams. But it was them alone got me through those nights, listening to the boatman's stories in the parlour, and dreaming of a better life. Most of them tales, I'd hear them one day, forget them the next. But there was one, stranger, more chilling than the rest, which I shall always remember. Because that one, it really happened, and it happened to me. Shilling to a pound, shilling to a pound. I will lay you a shilling to a pound. Watch the lady, watch the lady. Round and round and round she goes. Where will she stop? That no one knows. <laughs> well, my dear, what's it to be? Three cups. Which one's she under? It's. It must be that one. Sure. Choose again if you like. No. It, it, no. It's. It's that one. I saw it. Did you now? <laughs> Oh, she's up and gone. That she has, but not so very far now. <laughs> magic, that's what it is. No, it's a trick, that's all. Why, if I could work magic for real, do you think I'd be sitting here talking to the likes of you? He'd be as rich as Harry Houdini himself. Twice as rich, I reckon, because I'm at least twice as handsome. <laughs> <laughs> now, as it happens, Angel and me, we've done our own bit of escapology this very night. Really? Escape from our ships, what he means. Oh, I see. The Penelope. She put into port this morning. All the pan and she's taken after the four months at sea. She needs some work done on her. A bit of love and care and attention. <laughs> Same reason we're here and all. <laughs> Where is it you come from? The Indies. Or Jamaica. You heard of it? Never. In our time, we've been everywhere. Indies, uh, tropics, South China Seas. You must have seen so many wonderful things. <laughs> Inside of the ships, all we ever see. That and the occasional house of disrepute, of course. <laughs> Sailors' needs being what they is. But did you never see anything... Wonderful. How do you mean? I don't know. Strange. Mysterious. Magical, even. I don't really believe in all that, dear. You sailors, I thought you were meant to be superstitious. Some is, some ain't. Myself, I've known many a good man go to an early grave, and there never was a superstition that kept him from it. Though you do hear stories. The stories, that's all they is. Fact is, it don't profit a fellow to trust in anything he can't see, smell, or <laughs> touch. Oh, I hope there's more to this life than that. Indeed I do. Not that I imagine I'll ever know for certain. Trapped in here, you, you don't see so much of the world. Of anything, really. Well, perhaps there's something we can do about that. How do you mean? Don't need a brave oceans to see sights as would amaze you. Chill you to the bone, just to look at them. As it goes, I know a place not above half a league from here. Do you? We'll go there now, if you like. No, well, I don't know. Mr Cuff, he don't like us to stray too far. Mr Cuff, who's he? <laughs> Who do you think he is, her husband? If you just want somewhere to spend the night, there's good rooms upstairs. For a price. Well then, we'll come back after. What do you say? Well, I, I don't know. It ain't far. You won't be gone long enough to be missed. It's just, uh, i got to earn my keep somehow. <laughs> don't you worry, my dear. There's time enough for that. Where are we going? Why, don't you like surprises? I'd just like to know where I'm being taken, that's all. This is Bartley Square, ain't it, Martin? That it is, one of the most famous in all London. Fine houses, aren't they? Politicians, nobility. They're the only ones who live in a place like this. Not that there's many of them about this time of night. Oh, I should be heading back. Folk will be wondering where I got to. Wait. There it is. What? You see? Through them trees. You mean the house? That's it. 50 Barclay Square. And? What? Ain't you heard of it? That there is the most haunted house in all London. Haunted? I tell you, there's more folk died of fright in that house than any in Britain. Maybe the old empire. It don't look like much, though, does it? That's what our war boys said. Who? Sir Robert Warboys. 
right honourable member of parliament. Owner of the house was a personal friend of his. He told him its story, but war boys, he wouldn't believe him. So the owner bet him a hundred guineas he couldn't spend one night locked in the haunted room. Haunted room? But during the night, he was to ring once on the servant's bell to let him know he was content. If, however, he wanted to leave for some reason, he'd ring twice and they'd come let him out. What happened? Ran twice, did he? Yeah, that he did. Only it was too late. When they found him, he was lying in his bed, stone dead. Mouth agape, eyes bulging open, staring. His whole body in the grip of some great terror. What had he seen? No one knows. How could they? But whatever it was, the doctors... They said it had frozen the very blood in his veins. Is that true? Of course it ain't. He's just trying to scare you, that's all. It happened just like I told you. The story, it were in the newspapers everywhere. Don't you believe a word of it? Always fooling me, he is. Just his wife. Looks empty, doesn't it? What? The house. No lights, windows downstairs, all shuttered up. So? What do you say we take a closer look? How do you mean? Go inside, have a look around. I don't know. The window up there, it's open, look. Drain pipe beside it. To someone like you, Angel Led, that's as good as an invitation. What if someone saw? Well, watch out below. I, I don't want no part of this. I thought she was after some adventure. Well, perhaps she's right. We should head back. What's wrong, lad? <laughs> ain't the stomach for it. No, it ain't that. All you got to do is slip inside, come down and open the door for us. Then what? We take a look around, satisfy our curiosity, then head back to the inn. No one any the wiser, and we has a nice little story to tell. What do you say? Where can he be? No need to fear. He'll be with us directly. You sure he got through the window? Well, didn't you see? Didn't dare look. The window was so high, and what with the railings below, if he should have fallen... <laughs> Angel, he climbs masts twice that height at sea. On lookout, rigging sails. That's how he got his name. His name? Dwelling up there in the heavens. So far above the rest of us, sometimes he seems a very angel of God. I never heard of any angel guilty of breaking into somewhere that was forbidden them. If you disapprove, my dear, you're welcome to leave. Supposing there's someone in there, though, that he's been caught, or worse. We just suppose he ain't. They'd open the door and find us two well, waiting. Don't you here. set your mind a running now on things what ain't the case. If it's all the same, I'll be going now. As you please. Sorry, I was so long. Couldn't see to get down. Pitch black it is in there. What's wrong? Just, uh, just cold. That's all. Well, come in then. You hear something? Don't worry. There's no one home. The house, it's empty. I can't see nothing. Wait there. Where? Angel, where are you gone? Where is he? Do you hear me? What's that? Let there be light. <laughs> where did you find the lamp, lad? In here. Look. It's covered. Looks strange, don't it? All them white sheets of everything. What muslin. They must be away. Who? The owner, whoever lives here. They've gone, left the place empty, all covered up. Here, mine, look at this painting. Oh, who do you suppose he is? Our host, most likely. No, see the clothes, lad? Old fashioned, they is. This chap, whoever he was, he's been in the ground a while now. Lifelike, ain't it, though? Like you could step out of the frame and shake your body hand. He'd just as soon slit your throat by the looks of him. <laughs> You're right there. He looks a miserable devil. Hey, maybe he's that fella they say built a place. Who's that? Myers, that was his name. He had the place built a hundred years ago or more for him and his betrothed to live in. Only the very day of their wedding, she jilted him, <gasps> ran off with another. The shop, they say, drove the poor devil from his wits and he passed the rest of his days a recluse, shut up alone in the empty house. By day, he'd sleep in the bed he'd had made for her. By night, wander the house with a candle, as though any minute expecting a return. And that he did, even to his dying day. It's a sad story, is that? Sad? The man was a fool. Why, I'd as soon give up my soul to old Nick himself as to a woman. Would you? To fall in love, Angel, lad. That's to fall into a trap whereof no man may deliver you. If that tale don't teach you that, then nothing will. So that that's the end of the story? Oh, that it is. Unless, of course, you believe what some folks say. What's that? 
Over the years, there's many lived in this house who didn't die of fright, just ran mad. And amidst their babblings, all of them, they spoke of seeing this Myers, of his ghost, that is, what still makes his nightly vigil. And any he so finds, they say, who invades his quiet and does violence to his home... To them he does violence in return. Violence? Like what? I shouldn't like to say in present company. But be assured, he don't spare any on account of their sex. What he does, he does to man and woman alike. <gasps> What's that light? What? That light there under the door. You've been in there, Angel. No, oh, shh. Put out that lamp. Just the gas lamps. Some fool must have forgot to turn them off. <sighs> Here, come and take a look at this. What is it? Looks like our host's prepared us a meal. Long great table there is. Place set either end. Oh, it must be the dining room. Do you ever see a table that long? Two people sit down there to eat, they hardly be able to see each other, let alone talk. What's that on the table? Give it here. What's it say? Can't make it out exactly. To whom it may concern. Uh, yeah, I um, thought as much. Must be a letter inside. Well, we can't open it. It ain't for us. Of course it is. To whom it may concern. But who else should it concern but us? Well, go on, my dear. Read it. <clears throat> Welcome. I have been expecting you for some time. Yet now you are here at last... It seems that I am not. Perceptive, ain't he? Please make yourselves at home. Take whatever it is that you require. Wait for me and be assured that I shall be with you before you know it. Not if we can help it, he won't. Go on. Well, that's the end. Well, that's it. No signature. Nothing. I call that a curious kind of letter to leave for a guest. The table. Perhaps he had it set for them what he was expecting. Just two places, though, aren't they? <laughs> well, he wants to know we were bringing female company. <laughs> Here. Do you suppose there's something to eat under them dishes? <laughs> Starving, I am. Oh, what the... Oh, oh whatever it was, it's oh. rotten. Live with maggots by the looks of it. Must have been oh. left there weeks, maybe more. <sighs> Makes you wonder, don't it? Perhaps this host of ours, he ain't coming back at all. Oh, what kind of hospitality do you call that? All the same, it means we can do as we please. Ain't no one going to interrupt us. I thought we were going back now. Well, the letter. He did say to make ourselves at home. Take whatever we wanted. Just look at that knife. Solid silver it is. Must be worth a bit. No one ever said anything about no stealing. Nor did they. A little souvenir, that's all I'm after. A knife, that's a strange kind of souvenir. You're right. House like this must have any number of fine things. No one's likely to notice if one or two of them goes missing. It ain't right. Don't you understand, girl? Tonight, the whole house, it's ours to do with as we please. When are you going to get another chance like this? Take a look around, explore the place. And if you see something you want, well, we won't tell no one if you don't, eh? Someone there? Sorry, it's just me. What's that you're wearing? Quite a transformation, isn't it? It is that. What do you think? It's beautiful. Look like someone out of a picture or, uh, I, I don't know, a dream. The dress, it's white silk. I just found it hanging up on that mirror. Not a speck of dust on it. Like it was waiting for me. What? I don't know. Sounds strange, but when I first came in, it almost looked like it was someone. <laughs> Fits perfectly. Like it was made for you. Can you help fasten the back? Uh, if you want. Wedding dress, ain't it? I suppose so. Suits you. Only chance I'll ever get to wear one. <laughs> don't say that. True, though, isn't it? 
I am what I am, and there's an end to it. All the same, I should have liked to be something else. An actress, maybe, on the stage. I mean, you still could. Oh, I ain't no illusions. Just the same when I put this dress on, almost fancied myself mistress of the house, I did. <laughs> Don't suppose it hurts to pretend? You ever wonder what you might have been if you weren't a sailor? Not especially. Me, I, I never had much choice in the matter. Signed up with Mr Martin, I did. It was him what persuaded me. Do you always do what he tells you? I don't mind. A clever one he is. Cleverer than me at any rate. That's true enough. Well, Martin, I didn't see you there. What's going on? Well, nothing. Fast work, angel lad. I ain't left the two of you alone a few minutes. Already you got the girl walking up the aisle with you. I ain't like that. I ain't no objections, whatever the two of you was doing. I just came down to get me friend there. I need your help upstairs. What is it? Come and see. <laughs> Bring your bride with you, if you likes. <laughs> it's locked, you see? Only room in the old house. Is that room? It must be. The one where that Sir Robert died. Oh, you women, you get something into your heads and it's the devil of a task to get it out of them. It could be, though, couldn't it? The only reason it's locked is because it's where they keeps their valuables. Stands to reason, don't it? They wants to keep us out. Oh, something in. How are we going to get in anyway? Solid oak, that is. The two of us could charge it, force it open. So, lad, what do you say? I don't know. I think the way... Think? They... When we're at your job to think, you leave that to me. Sorry, Martin. You ready, then? Up to three. One, two, three. <coughs> it, it moved. I felt it. Again. One, two, three. <coughs> Again. Stop, you mustn't. One, two, three. What's that? A gust of air, that's all. The window. Someone must have left it open. That's better. Angel, get that lamp in here, will you? So, where's all these valuables you were talking about? Ain't nothing here but that bed. Well, what's that on the pillow? Oh, you see? What did I tell you? Looks like some kind of jewellery case. You think so? Yeah, open it. Ain't nothing precious in there. Well, I don't know, something like that. Must be worth something, mustn't it? Do not forget. What? That's what it says, you see? Inlaid there inside the lid. So what's it mean? What am we meant to forget? It's your Mr. Myers. The one what never forgot his lost love. This is... It's his room. Oh, I could be anyone. Just look at that bed, though. It must have belonged to the master of the house. Well, grand, ain't it? Looks like you could lie down there and sleep a thousand years. An eternity. You can if you want. Pass the night in it, I mean. I thought we were going back to the tavern. Ain't no sense paying for some pokey old room when there's somewhere like this for gratis. Well, I ain't sleeping there, that's for certain. Ain't nothing going to happen to you with me here beside you. An angel just next door. Why next door? Well, I didn't imagine as you'd want to watch. Uh, don't worry, we'll ring the bell if we want anything. Come to bed now, will you? What for? If you want your money, my girl, then by God you'll have to earn it. I may not be much to look at, but I ain't no devil neither. And I hope my coin's as good as any other. It's not that. It's this room. Something about it, it don't feel right. Oh, it's cold, is all. You come over here now, see if I can't warm you up, eh? Better now, isn't it? Snug as two rats in a trap. A trap? Why'd you say that? It's an expression, is all. <laughs> excitable little thing, isn't you? Well, what say I gives you something to get excited about, eh? What was that? What? 
you didn't hear nothing. There. You heard that. There's someone out there. No, it's just... It's getting closer. Hello? You all right in there? Oh, Lord almighty, what you trying to do? You scared the poor girl half out of her wits. Seems like she weren't the only one. What you say? Uh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to wake you. We weren't asleep. Me neither. Why not? I don't know. I just couldn't, that's all. You all right, lad? Of course. I was just going down the kitchen, that's all. Awful hunger I got. Was wondering if you wanted anything. Me? I've everything I need right here. Thanks all the same. How about you, Molly? You want anything? I don't know what there is. Well, come with me if you like. What are you playing at, lad? Nothing. Just thought you might want to see. For herself, I mean. Couldn't wait your turn, that it? No, I, I just... Go want... on. Take her. It ain't like that. Take her, I say. Well, come with us if you like. No. You go have your fun. Just be a good lad and make sure you brings her back after. Oh, oh careful now. Oh. Let me like I must have slipped. Take my arm if you like. Don't want you falling now, do we? You see the larder anywhere? Why? You hungry? I thought that's why we came down here. Reason I brought you, it weren't to eat. Then what was it? I want you to go. Leave this place. Why? We should never have come here. What we've done, it's a bad business and you were better out of it. But it's done now. We're here. Please. I don't understand. I didn't want to tell you, but... What? Lying there alone in the dark, all of a sudden, I felt like I weren't alone. That there was someone there, standing over me, watching. Who? I can't say. That's why you came to our room. Fact is, we ain't meant to be here. If we stay, I fear something terrible shall happen. Do you believe that? I don't know what to believe. For your sake, though, Molly, I shouldn't like to take the risk. Especially as it was us what brought you here. The clothes I came in, I left them upstairs. And your friend... I know you was expecting payment. Here, take this. It's all I've got. But it's too much. I ain't done nothing to deserve it. Please, you take it and leave this very instant. Won't you come with me? What for? Don't you want to? Of course. But Mr Martin, we're right to cut and leave him here alone. Back on the ship... It shouldn't go well for me. Not well at all. But Angel... I ain't no angel, Molly. My name... It's Ned. Goodbye, Ned. I shan't forget you. Quickly now. What's that? Oh, just him upstairs. Wants you back, doesn't he? Well, don't you satisfy him. Impatient, ain't he? He rang twice. Well, don't you pay him no mind now. Oh, what's happening... Why does it keep ringing? Oh, look. But you go. Now. Run. You hear shouting? Please. Oh, there's something wrong. Go! Uh. Martin! What is it? What's the matter? Back in the tavern, I slept not a wink all night. I never said where I'd been, and once I'd handed over the money, none thought to ask. I lay in my bed all night, imagining what might have passed in that house after I'd gone. I'm here. What's wrong? Open the door. It's Jack It can't be. We, we broke the lock. Help me quickly. He's come again. Who? Who is it? You ain't real, you ain't. It was just a story. Martin! Save me, Angel! Save me! The door! It won't move! No escape! Martin? Martin, you there? On to me! 
I told myself it was my fancy, no more, and resolved to put such thoughts from my mind. Yet even as I slept, word of that night's events was sweeping through the city, and the next day the story was everywhere. The newspapers, they told of how two sailors had broken into the empty house and how they'd slept in a room kept locked since any could remember. Apparently, something they'd seen so terrified them that the elder of the two, Robert Martin, had thrown himself from the window, his falling body impaled on the railings below. An iron spike, they said, had pierced him directly through the heart, killing him that very instant. The other, Ned Blunden, was found crying and shouting in the street outside. None could get no sense of him, and even when they took his companion down, he continued to rave, saying nothing of what had happened but only babbling of subjects not to the point, such as love and hope and time. With none to care for him, he was confined to an asylum for the insane. In the days that followed... I often thought to visit him there, but each time would reach the gate only to turn back at the very last. Perhaps it was fear kept me away, perhaps guilt, for had it not been for me, my desire for escape, for adventure, we should never have gone to the house that night. And while I'd found what I'd sought, and more besides, it was he and his friend who'd paid the price. Perhaps that's why I never told another what I'd seen, who in any case would have believed me, much less understood. For better or worse, that story, it was my secret, my burden. The dress I took I kept buried away in a chest where none might find it, a chest I would open for no man, right until the very end. Yet even now, when all hopes and dreams are behind me, those events live still in my remembrance, where I recount them again and again, now and always, so none may hear but the ears of the dead. In 50 Barclay Square by Dylan Ritson, Molly was played by Sophie Roberts, Robert Martin by Harry Myers, and Angel by John Cummins. The director was Gemma Jenkins.